Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is Tinker77, and we are back on my Create Above and Beyond world, where today we're going to head down to Bedrock. The reason we're heading down to Bedrock, if we look at the quests right here, the next contraption we got to make is this Bedrock contraption, basically getting a, a Bedrock's bounty, which is making the Andesite cobble. And then this is kind of like a subset here, which is to lift that cobble up to the surface. And then from there, we should be able to make the andesite uh, alloy combining the andesite cobblestone and the algae blocks that we made the algal blocks which we made in the last episode so these three things are our goal for today now because this is the output here i think i would like to have it close by the mine so i'm just going to start digging a hole down now i know by looking and doing some testing that i want this hole to be basically four wide okay so uh, i can do it a square which would probably be easier doesn't really matter as long as I have one side is a ladder going down. Now I do have a bunch of ladders. So, uh, and I actually should probably have some water in case we encounter any lava. There we go. I also have my repair kits. So I think this will be a good location. Let's get started going down and we'll head on down to bedrock. Okay, we have encountered a cave. I'm not sure what's down here, so we are uh, going to have to jump down and see. Hopefully, uh, well, hopefully we can beat everybody that's down here. So here we go. Okay, that was pretty good. Now, oh, there's another guy right there and an enderman. I see him. There. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, we're about to die. So they're shooting each other. That's excellent. That one sees me. Oh, rip. We died. Okay. I got to get back down here. Well, I'm down at the bottom. You can see here it's kind of opened up a little bit. And we can see some bedrock. Now, the bedrock's useful because when we try to make andesite cobble, if you look at this right here, the Andesite Cobble recipe shows you some things here, but if you go to Custom Generating, basically what this says is that if you have water and you have lava that would normally make something, 25% of the time it'll make Andesite Cobble. It also makes uh, Diorite Cobble and other things, but you have to be right above a piece of bedrock. So that's why we're all the way down here, okay? So now I'm going to get back up to the surface, and I'm going to go get some things that we need to make the device down here to start automatically mining. The main tool used to get rid of the cobblestone is a drill. So we're going to make a drill head like this. Take some lead, some iron sheets, and some ingots there. And then, of course, you take it over to the smithing table with a andesite machine, and it makes the drill. That's one of the main parts of this process. Some of the other things I think we'll need is some obviously some water and some lava. Of course, we have the drill. I need an andesite funnel and a chest that we want to uh, capture all of the uh, items that get broken. Uh, some slabs to kind of contain the lava. A cobblestone stair or some of the water also some gears and some a water wheel because we want to actually power this whole thing and some cog wheels and some staves and things like that so our staves shafts okay so anyway we're going to go on down i did put a fence down here because i almost fell in but we're going to go on down and we're going to set this machine up okay i'm going to take this block right here is the block that we're going to produce things on and i want the water to flow this way okay so we're going to take a stair to symbolize that that will be waterlogged in a moment. It will flow this way. This will produce uh, the cobble version once the lava is over it. And then when it's broken, it will then flow this way over this to this side. And there'll be a double chest right here. So let's get that chest in place. Like that. And I plan on having an andesite funnel here going in to pick stuff up. Okay, so that makes kind of sense, I hope. Now, I usually use some trap doors here. So I'm going to put one there. And one there, and we'll get a couple more trap doors here for the other side. Just like that, okay? Now, 
We're going to eventually put a drill on one of these sides. And probably I could do that right now. Let's put it on this side over here. I forgot about the drill. So we will uh, put the drill down. It needs to go facing inward. Let's see if I can do this correctly. And there it is, the drill. And it will actually be, when activated, will drill out uh, the particular cobblestone that's there. Let us set up an infinite water source. I'm going to use this space. Right now, this is uh, an unused space, but I have a plan for this little cutout in a little while. Okay, so there we go. We'll waterlog the stair. You can see it's flowing across here. And so that'll push any block you want into the funnel. Now we got to be able to uh, lock down the uh, lava. So we'll put a block on top of these four pieces, including the drill. Okay, and we'll use the lava. So here we go. Actually, I need to put another block up here, don't I? That's fine. There we go. And it, of course, made granite this time, which is something that we normally don't see in vanilla. So now what we have to do here is we have to basically dig out a little bit of a hole here because I want to power this up so that it does drill this correctly. So from the drill, we're going to have to have some power and we're going to use water wheels. So I've made three of those water wheels up and we're going to put those right here. And you can see they're coming out this way so we want the water to go around and down like this. So we're going to put some blockers here. Okay. And of course, we want our wall to be right about here. So now we just got to add the water that flows around this. Now it is going to come out and that's fine. We're going to block this off though. And now you can see we have the water wheel running. So now what we need to do is we need to take that power and get it to the drill. Now I've found that if I took one of these shafts and then I put a wheel and then a small cog onto it, a large cog wheel and a small one, we should be okay. So let's do that. Here we go. Let's go down to that direction and then just add in a shaft here and it should start working. Okay, so there it is, it's drilling. And we see the piece got flowed across and then it makes another piece. Like that, we got granite. So far, all we're getting is granite, but it has a 25% chance of each type. There's a diorite one, so it looks like it's working. The goal here, though, is to get a piece of andesite for the quest. If you look at the quest here, it says... Andesite. Now, we've already picked some up, but this should work here. We just need to do it. There's some uh, gabbro cobblestone. But it is working basically right now. So this is just creating an infinite source of cobble for us. If it would just create the andesite one. <laughs> I know it does. Let's kind of wait for it to make sure we get this. And there is andesite. Okay. So we do see it there. That's good. And that means for sure that it works and we can complete this quest. Okay. So the next piece of this puzzle here is we want to really do this right here, which is the andesite lift. Okay, and basically all of your andesite is likely not being generated near your factory. Figure out a way to bring it to the surface. So we're going to get some parts for that that will work to bring us down up to this hole up to the surface, which is the next part of this puzzle. To get the various cobblestone up to the surface, we're going to be using a rope pulley. And it basically has a pulley that goes down and grabs a platform. So we want to build that platform first. Now we're going to use some uh, linear chassis here. So to make that, it's just logs and andesite alloy. And we just need three of those. So let's just do that really quick. We have those. We also have a chest. We're going to need some funnels. Now I only have one funnel at the moment. So all we have to do here is go over to the uh, stone cutter, put one of the andesite machines in there, and we can get a bunch more of these funnels, okay? Now we may need, and this is something I might uh, have to get here, I might need a barrel or two for this little process. It's kind of a stopgap here, so let's see here. Uh, let's make let's make a couple barrels. And we're gonna go down and we're gonna set this up. Back down here in the little mine area, we're gonna put these uh, chassis pieces down here. It forms a little platform, a three-piece platform. Now what we're gonna do here is on this block right here is where the rope pulley will attach, which means we have these two blocks that we want to have things go up, okay? So I'm going to put right now, I think I'm just going to use one uh, chest. I don't know if I can do two if they remain attached while it moves. I think in my testing that didn't work. But I'm going to put a chest here. Now we have to get the items out of here and over to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a little bit of a funnel flow system here. I'm going to put a, that goes into there. So that anything dropped into it will go into this chest. Now we're going to go up a couple blocks. Let's get some blocks here. Okay, and on top of this, we want to have a barrel. Okay, I can just put a barrel on there. There we go. 
Now the barrel will then output with another funnel anything that it has in into it out the side. So it should fall out and into here. Now what we want to do is have this on this side an input of going into here and through. And then we're going to put one on top of here as output. So I'll throw the item up. It'll go over through the barrel and on down into this chest. And this is the chest that will eventually be loaded. So let's put this on here and you can see it's going up really quick. It's unloading that and all of that stuff is being loaded into to this chest. Oops, I didn't want to put that there. I always do that with the uh, block. Anyway, let's look at that. Put those back. So you can see it's loading all of that material up there. So now all we got to do is make the rope pulley and have that bring the stuff from up there or from down here all the way up there. I've set up another windmill over here so we'll have power for our rope pulley and for other things we're going to make on this side of the uh, factory farm floor area. I don't know what I want to call this yet. But uh, we're going to need a couple things. First of all, we're going to need what's called a gear box or a gear shift because we want to be able to change the direction of this rotation so that it can go up and down. You can see that it takes some cog wheels. It takes some redstone dust and some andesite casing. And I believe I have all of that on me, so we're going to grab that. There we go. I need a piece of cobblestone because we need to make a uh, lever for right now so that we can control this manually. So is that, does that work with this? It does not. Okay, grab the wrong type of cobble. That's okay. And where is the regular cobble? There it is. Okay. <laughs> it looks very similar. It's the same kind of color. There we go. We, uh, we have a, a lever. That works very well for that, for the gear shift. The other thing we need to make is the rope pulley itself. So if we look at the rope pulley, it's just the anisite casing, which we have. Gear uh, shafts we have. We have an iron sheet, and we need to get some rope. And so if we pour some rope, there's a piece of rope. We should be able to make... Uh, the rope pulley. Uh, do I not have enough casings? I don't have enough casings. Let's see. Can we make another casing real quick? Uh, where is that? Andesite casing. Oh, I need another andesite alloy. Which we aren't quite making at the moment. But we do have all of these bricks here. And we just go over here and grab some andesite. And we can make it really quick. We're trying to automate this process. So we don't even have to do this step. But uh, I guess I got to. Here. Let's grab some of this uh andesite cobble here which we have down below and that's what we're trying to make now see that was pretty easy right and then we're going to make the andesite casing gives us two of those and then we can make the rope pulley excellent okay we have everything we need so we want to basically come over here we would like to make this uh, gear shifted so that we can change the direction and we'll probably put that in line right away so that we can do that with a timer or something like that later on so let's put this right here Okay, and we're, I'm going to put the lever on the side so we know uh, what it's doing. We can change direction. And now out of this, we want to basically make a couple of changes to the uh, speed of this. And so we're going to use some of the gears again. So we're going to go with, the, what is it, the large one goes faster? Is that right? I always get confused. Yeah, large to a small. So let's go up to a small gear, a small cog. And it puts it up there. And we'll go back to that. And then we'll go back down here again. That. Okay. And then we just got to have that transfer. We could probably do almost one more. If you look at it. Put another one of these. And we could maybe go. I want to go up. But I don't think we're going to be able to go up. Let's go down here. I'm just trying to make it go as fast as we can. Uh, so that it doesn't take as long to get back up from the bottom here. So can we I get in this hole? I don't want to fall down. Uh, There. Okay. And then basically I want to take this power transmission up a level to where we want the rope pulley. Okay, right there. And we'll put the rope pulley on it. And so now it's right above that spot that is where we thought we would have the uh, rope pulley pull. So hopefully this will work. Let's engage this right now. Okay, you can see it's going down. That's what we want to see. And so if we go on down here, it should connect up. We should see some sort of um, animation or something that shows that it is connected. And here it comes. Let's see if it shows that it's connecting. There you can see that's kind of solid. And I can't go through that anymore. Isn't that great? So let's go over here. And we're going to go on up. And now I'm going to engage this. And it should pull this all the way up. Now we flip the lever. The direction has changed. And now you can see the rope is coming up. And shortly this whole platform should be right here. And it should be just about here. So there it is. Look at that. And the platform stops right there and it's ready to go now you can see it did take the funnels 
uh, that we were using down below. That's okay because what's going on here is that down down in the um, down in the mine, the barrel is holding on to those blocks that are there. So now we should be able to take the items out of this chest. You can see they all came up here and bring them on some sort of belt line to sort them out. So that's the next step. I've hooked up a belt here, as you can see, and it's going in the proper direction away from this chest. Now, if we put a funnel on here, output, it would then put the items onto this uh, belt. Now, there are four different types. There's granite, diorite, there is gabbro, and then there's andesite. So we really need to be able to sort this out. So what I would like to use is storage drawers. So we'll use a funnel going into a storage drawers, and I want four of those over here. So looking at the storage drawer, we want just this big oak drawer. You have to make oak trim, and oak trim, you get four of those with this recipe right here. And it does take zinc. Uh, so let's go look at that. I have some zinc on me. We'll just go and create this right here. We have four of those. That works out fantastic. We're going to go over to the stone cutter. We're going to put this in, and we're just going to get uh, some four of these drawers here. Okay. Now, these drawers we're going to put over against this side over here. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. There we go. Now, we're going to put uh, funnels going into those. I don't know if I have enough funnels. I probably don't. We'll put one going in there. We'll put some more. Let's grab some more funnels. We use that by doing the andesite machine in the stone cutter. So, again, we have an andesite machine left. Let's grab the funnels. There we go. We're going to add the three other ones over here. Now, the interesting thing about this is is that this should be divided by each particular type, but I'm going to grab... Oh, well, I guess I'm not going to do it that way. Um, let's grab some of the other ones. We'll put the andesite at the end. That's the key one that I want. Okay, so we'll put the andesite there, and we'll see. Let's grab a diorite and the gabbro, and we'll put those in the other spots, okay? There's that one and this over here. So now this is being sorted out through these four storage drawers. The idea will be that I'll add the last of the... Uh, uh, funnels over here and that will then be able to output the andesite that we can combine with the chest that's over here to make the andesite alloy. So this system will just unload this entire chest for us and that's awesome. Doing that we did get a quest that was completed here. If you look at lifesavers we have the big barrels too which gives us these upgrade templates and that's good because we need those right now. What we're going to make here is a drawer key that locks the drawer so in case we take out all the items it retains what it's supposed to be for the drawer we want to keep that andesite drawer always there even if it's depleted now if you look at this it does take the upgrade template it takes two gold ingots and a gold nugget we'll look over here and we'll grab two of those and a gold nugget just like that and with our uh, upgrade templates we have our key and so now we can come run back over here and we can put these on here. Now, these each of these can store, it looks like, how many stacks? 32 stacks of items. So that should be really good. Now, eventually, this will end up be empty. Remember, it's still mining down, down below, so I can then send this back down. But you know what? This is a pain. I really don't like having to do this manually, and we're trying to make everything automated. So let's think about a way that we can make this be automatic, too. For that next piece, we're going to have to use some redstone, and we have to get the redstone. I don't have enough. So if you look at redstone dust, there really isn't a redstone ore that you can find. But what you can do is you can crush or mill down cinnabar. Cinnabar you get from, looks like, from other pieces like cinnabar ore, which we have to mine. So I think I'm going to go down into mine for a little bit, see if I can get some cinnabar ore. Here's some cinnabar. It looks like that is charged Surtis Quartz. I want to see if I can get there. Um, it's a little dark, so I'm trying to light it up as I go. Maybe we'll find some cinnabar on the way, but I would like to see if I can get that charged surtis quartz. It is charged surtis quartz. Let's grab that. That is awesome, because we need that for probably some other things. I'm going to grab this other surtis quartz here. And I also have seven pieces of the uh, cinnabar, so I'm hopefully that'll be enough. We're going to take that back up right now. I've put the items in the millstone. Now, there's no way to really tell right now how much is in it, but then I found if you press shift, you can see at the top it says it has four cinnabar left, and it's made 12 redstone dust. So we'll just wait for this to finish. Looks like it's done. Let's grab the redstone dust out of here. There we are. We have 28 redstone dust. Now let's go over here and we're going to make a couple things. Now we're going to basically be making a powered latch, which basically is a toggle switch, and a timer. Now both of these take, you can put them into a stone cutter. You put the circuit assembly. So we're going to make this right now. Andesite alloy is easy. A circuit plate. Well, that is just smooth stone being cooked up. So let's get some stone and cook up some stone. And we only need one piece, right? So let's get that going here. Cook that up. It should be smooth stone soon. 
The other piece, and this was why we needed the redstone, is this red alloy wire. We need two pieces of this. And you can see we get a bunch of that from three red alloy ingots. Now, how do we get red alloy ingots? Let's click on that. And you can see you can do a couple different things. One of them is you put four redstone and a copper ingot into a uh, press with the basin and you will get uh, the red alloy ingots. We need 12 redstone and three copper ingots. Now that's the question is, do we have enough copper here? We have some crushed copper ore. I may have to go get more copper. Let's go see if we have this. Okay, I'm gonna cook this up. Hopefully this will be enough. And we'll see if we have enough copper and hopefully we'll get the three pieces we need. Meanwhile, we have the smooth stone here. We're gonna grab that. We're gonna again, look at this just to make sure I know how to do this. And it's just in, uh, cook it again, we'll make that. Okay, well, let's just put it back in there and see if it makes the uh, circuit plates. And there are the two circuit plates. Excellent. So all we need is 27 ingots to make three, or nuggets to make three ingots. There we have that. We'll make those into the ingots. There we go. And we need those three to be into plates. No, we don't need them as plates. We need just to put them in here, right? That's right. So we put three of those in there. Can I not just drop it in there? Oh, I won't let me throw it in there. There it goes. And then four redstone. And it should engage. There it goes. And this should give us that red alloy ingot. And there it is. So I'm going to do this a couple more times. And now we have the three ingots. So let's go over here and make the wire. And we should be ready to go just about to make these pieces. There we are. Okay, so we need to make two of the circuit assemblies. And there we have those. We put them in a stone cutter. And we need to make sure we get the right things here. We need the toggle latch, powered toggle latch. That's this thing right here. And we need the timer. So let's look around, see if we can see the timer. Don't see it yet. Got to be very specific here. Wow, there's a lot of stuff that you can make with this. Or gauge repeaters. Wow, you can make a lot of stuff with this. Is it like the last thing? Timer, there we go. We're going to grab that and pull it down here. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to go over here and we're going to play around with this. Now, I did send this back down. You can see the chest is gone. It should be down there and loading this up. But uh, I'm going to take off this particular device right here. We're going to put, first of all, the toggle latch. It's going into here. So if I flip this latch, it changes the direction, okay? Now, we're going to go over here. We're going to put a timer. Now, this thing spins, and every time it clicks, you can see it goes around and it clicks that, okay? We want that to change. So now we right-click on that, and we can change the interval on this. I would like it to be every five minutes, which is what? Is that 300 seconds? So let's make it up to 10. And we might make this 300. Like that. Okay. Now, the interesting thing is this is still running in where it's in the mode where it's all the way down. It's been there for a while. I can still go over here and toggle this manually. Okay. Now, this thing, you can see it's moving very slowly. It will spin around every 300 seconds and flip the latch. So this should be automatically going down, waiting five minutes, going up, waiting five minutes. And it should be then bringing us all of the various cobblestone. So I think we've done this particular quest, which is the andesite lift. I'm going to mark that as completed. And so the next thing on here, which I really would like to get done today, is the algesite mixer. Okay. And what this is, is in another mix. This time it'll be the bricks and your surfaced andesite cobble. So we're going to take the output of this item right here, which is our andesite cobble, cobble and we're going to add it to this in a mixer. And we should then be able to get uh, the materials that we need, which are these uh, andesite alloys. All right. So to get this to work, we're going to need a basin. And we're going to need a bunch of shafts and some belts. And so we're going to make, basically plan this out. I've done some digging right here to plan this out a little bit. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up the mixer. It's going to be right here. This line is going to feed into that right there. So let's put in a belt here. We haven't powered this yet, of course. Let's put that belt in. It goes from there to there. Okay, it's going to feed in the bricks. This side is going to feed in the cobblestone. So we're going to go from here, and that's not placed right, to here. There we go. Let's put this in correctly and put a belt on it. There we go, all the way over to here. And then from over here, we're going to have just a little belt that'll take it to uh, the place where we need to store it, which will be some sort of chest or something here. So that's the idea. So now I just got to get these belts powered up. Again, to make the mixer, we need to make a whisk. Put that right there. And we take it over to the stone cutter. Sorry, the stone cutter. The, uh, I always forget what this is called. The smithing table. <laughs> and put in the whisk there. And we have the mixer. Now the mixer is going to go over here. 
to this setup. Now, I've got a lot of gears here. I know it looks kind of ugly, but I like it. Um, we're going to put that right there. You can see this belt's working in the right direction. This is going the right direction. This is going in the correct direction. Okay, so we just have to hook this mixer up. Now, we really need to be able to change uh, directions off of this, okay? So I was going to go off of maybe this, this gear right here, but we might have to go off of a different one to make it go correctly, maybe even this one. I am not sure. We need to have a gear here, a cog wheel for sure, okay? We're going to have to use a vertical gear box, and I should have that right here. Let's see if I can put that on top. Of course, the orientation didn't work very well that way. Um, and the belts are making me move. Oh, no. Okay. So there's we have that. We're going to have to have another gearbox changing gears from that to this. Okay. So let's go over from here. And are we not in line? We're not in line yet. So it would be nice if I could just do it from this direction here. Maybe I can with another gearbox. I'd like to go a little bit faster speed. So if we put that gearbox here... It's going there. We could probably use two more vertical gearboxes, and that would work. Hopefully, that would get enough of the power over to it. So let's make some gearboxes. Again, gearboxes are easy, and then to make them vertical, you just put them back into a crafting grid, and it turns them into vertical gearboxes. Okay, so we're going to put one here and one here. And I think that that's enough speed. So now uh, we have to put a chest here and get one, two, three funnels. I may have done this wrong. This belt may have to go one block lower. I'm not sure yet, but we'll just see. We'll see how this goes. We definitely want that, and we definitely want an input there. So it's going to be going in. We want an output here. And there's so the andesites moving into the mixer. And then over here, where the bricks are, we're also going to bring that output. So they should be dumping into the mixer, and the mixer should start going here pretty quick. There we go. Excellent. And if it makes what we need, andesite alloy, you can see it's not coming out. Okay, so we have to basically lower this belt and lower this. That shouldn't be uh, too hard. Okay, so there we go. You can see that the andesite cobble is kind of queued up. So are the bricks. Mixers was working perfectly fine. And every so often, you'll see a, an andesite alloy come out of there. Now, that's fine. And then it comes over here, and we have automatic andesite alloy. Oh, my gosh. This is excellent. Let's go look at the quest really quick, and we can check that off because we definitely have that going on. We have the algae cooker. I don't know why I didn't have that already done. And we also can now do the andesite alloy. So we've done all of this side of the puzzle. Okay, the next thing we're going to be working on probably in the next episode is getting all of this stuff sorted. This will also help me to sort out the problems that we've been having with the uh, wood farm, okay? And then if we go back over here, we can basically make logs. We can make planks make these um, slabs, and then we'll get to the kinetic uh, mechanism. Now, if you look here, this is the way we've been doing it manually. What we're going to be doing is a sequence assembly, which will be using the deployers here with andesite alloy, andesite alloy, and a saw. So I think we're getting really close to getting those kinetic mechanisms. So this is awesome. Well, guys, that's all I've got time for for this video. I sure hope you like it. If you do, please click that like button. If you have any comments, put them down in the comment section. And if you'd like to be notified of the videos I produce, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get all the notifications, okay? Thanks, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.